Hello guys, my name is DJ Ola Seven Owen. We come and welcome to yet another episode of the biggest podcast show in the land uh, on the spot, the Ola Seven Podcast Show. So a show that brings you closer to your favorite personalities. And I'm delighted to uh, say I'm joined by a business mogul, uh, a banker, an agent of God, you know, follower of Jesus Christ, um, zealot for Zim and Africa founder of Kingdom Private Equity, a coach at uh, SMI, LMI, and FMI, a role model to many from the dusty streets of Highfields to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome uh, Dr. Nigel Chanakira. Welcome, Dr. Thanks, DJ Ola. What a pleasure for me to be here. (laughs) And congratulations for launching... On your own, so to speak. Wow! Thank you so much, Doc. Thank you so much. You know, it's such an honor to be, you know, to a congratulatory message from from a doctor like you. Well, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. Yes. And uh, when things are started new and afresh, mm-hmm. I'm always encouraged. Uh, somebody had the nerve to post something mm-hmm. audacious. Yes. Because <laughs> I know precisely what I'm doing. Yes. So I yes. am motivated when people start things mm-hmm. afresh and yes. new and then begin to chart their own course. Wow. So I'm here to support you and uh, hopefully... This uh, recording will be a good one for you Definitely. and your followers. Definitely. Wow. I thank you so much, uh, uh, Doc. I really appreciate the support. And uh, in my introduction, I mentioned the words an ardent of God, um, a follower of Jesus Christ. You unashamedly, uh, ashamedly, you know, talk about Jesus Christ, uh, which is something I admire about your, your uh, about you, Doc. It's not far than John I follow your even your tweets, everything. I am following. Okay. So, what are you so grateful for? You know that uh, the Lord has done for you. Well, you know, I um, have uh, a background which is that of a commoner, mm-hmm. so to speak. Mm-hmm. And when I look back at my uh, life for the past fifty-seven odd years, mm-hmm. uh, I counted all joy mm-hmm. and a blessing. Kwandaka uh, Vandokuri, yes. as you you yourself pointed out from mm-hmm. the dusty, yes. uh, you know, streets of uh, Highfields, mm-hmm. and to find myself being sought after by people like you mm-hmm. and and the world at large for what I have to offer is humbling. Yeah, and so I'm grateful that the Lord located me when I was lost. Wow, and uh, I am now on an even keel. Mm-hmm. And I can go even further when I'm walking along with the Lord Jesus Christ, my personal Lord and Savior. Mm, that's very powerful. And, uh, you know, in an interview you did uh, with um, uh, my brother Trevor Nube, uh, you uttered, uh, you know, some words that got to me, which are, I am on a journey of recruiting more people to heaven. Oh, you yes. know, this statement alone holds water, dog. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing that? Well, I think first and foremost, uh, sometimes you are the Bible, the only Bible that people read. Mm -hmm. And so when you are in the spotlight for one reason or another, people are watching, Mm -hmm. they are listening, they are wanting to know how you think, Mm -hmm. what you feel. And when you can be a poster boy for Christ, Mm -hmm. I mean, what a privilege. Mm. And so for me, um, the Great Commission says we must bring many to Christ. Yes. And if I can be able to do that Mm -hmm. and uh, show people the glory of God that Mm -hmm. dwells in me, Mm -hmm. then I think I would have made headway. Wow. Something I am proud about, Mm -hmm. something I do unashamedly, as you say, and uh, so be it. And so it would be my privilege and mm. honor for people who don't know Christ mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to inbox me. And yeah. we can have a conversation. Yes, yes. And who knows? Mm. I might have the privilege of leading them to Christ. Yes, very true. Yeah. And, um, you know, we have uh, youths, Varasa Upenyu, our judge, our dog, and desperately need Jesus Christ to intervene. So many, so many lost uh, sheep. <laughs> How best can they be assisted? to find their way to Christ? Well, I think, you know, it's a personal decision, mm-hmm. uh, first and foremost. And 
Yeah, no dan one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, the Lord will call you and you will feel within your person that uh, I can do better. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes it's an experience, yes. sometimes it's a preaching, mm-hmm. sometimes it's listening to me as people are doing mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And they will say, ah, but you businessmen, mm-hmm. ano day, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. anga day. Yeah. I see in the ning and the chitty passina jesu, a panacha doziva. Wow. Passina jesu and the carasica. And the pandinum see as we show and no zungaira and no penu, no shy a kutin doji ita say. Yes. But when I have the Lord, when I have the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. guiding me, when I have His word as a daily reading, mm-hmm. then I know that I'm ga- gathering wisdom. Wow that is transformational mm-hmm. in my own life yes. and in the life of others. And and this is why for me, you know, Jesus Christ is real. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ changed my life. Mm. <laughs> right? Yeah. But, At what point? Well, look, you know, for me, first and foremost, the people you hang around with, mm-hmm. uh, Ola, are important. Mm-hmm. And for me, I could see that I was wasting my life, mm. in a sense. Yeah. And when I looked over my shoulder and saw people who were in Christ, mm-hmm. I could see that they were more organized. They were progressing mm. in life. Yes. And so you change your friends, mm-hmm. you become somebody else. Yes. Uh, and I did that. And I got to see you and I have a shash of my boozers. Yay. And you should think about it. And not to say that's terrible yeah. uh, or such, mm-hmm. but there was no Christ-likeness yeah, yeah, in that. Yeah, yeah. And then I met men who were followers of Christ, mm-hmm. ambassadors of Christ. I could see their families mm-hmm. uh, had more structure. I could see there were role models, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, to a lot of people. Yeah. And I decided to join them. And, and my life has never been the same. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean I'm perfect. Yeah. But I am seeking Christ daily mm-hmm. and trying to perfect my ways. Wow. And in so doing, I feel challenged. Mm-hmm. There is a promised land that I'm seeking. Mm-hmm. And in so doing, it just gives me goosebumps. I get excited yeah, in my spirit, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That uh, the, what the Lord has in store for me, what mm-hmm. is planned for me, you know, I can barely imagine. Mm-hmm. I could barely imagine I would be who I am today mm. were it not for Christ. And wow. so the journey has been absolutely wonderful. So profound. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, Dr. Nigel Chanakira here on the spot on the Ola 7 a podcast show. So you celebrated um, your 32nd uh, anniversary. You know, <laughs> marriage. Wow. <laughs> uh, 30, 32 years these days in this day and era. Mm. Ah, it's golden. It's golden, uh, dog. As it's going to get easy for, I mean, I, I feel sorry for like people of my, my, my generation, mm-hmm. you know, to reach uh, to that stage. Guti, I've been with 32 years very marriage. Most of these marriages just like you know, two years, three years. How have you managed to to stay, you know, um, married for that long? And uh, I mean, these young ones can barely stay in marriage for five years. Well, I think all that there are a couple of things. I think marriage is an important part of one's life. Mm-hmm. When you find a spouse, the Bible says you find, when you find a wife, you find a good thing. Mm. A good wife will either make you mm-hmm. or break, break you. Break you. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, for me, uh, I, marriage is something that is, it's got to be intentional. Mm-hmm. It's got to be a choice that you make. Mm-hmm. And you want it to be a quality decision. So who you court or who you date, Mm -hmm. I think is important. Oh. Yeah. So for me, I can only speak about my own experiences. Mm -hmm. I think I admired my dad. Mm -hmm. My dad was my hero. Oh, yeah. Uh, Remains a hero for Mm -hmm. me. Uh, He was um, a businessman. He Mm -hmm. is a businessman, Mm -hmm. although he's 93 now. Wow. Unbelievable. (laughs) But in a sense, I looked at him Mm -hmm. and I saw the contribution that my mother had Mm -hmm. in his life. Mm -hmm. 
she kind of kept him on the straight and narrow path. Wow. She was a friend to him mm -hmm. and a checking mechanism to him. And so in the same vein, when I sought for a wife, mm -hmm. I wanted a wife who was a disciplinarian, mm -hmm. uh, a friend to me, yeah. uh, somebody I could have fun with, mm -hmm. and somebody who could bring me back on an even keel and good path mm -hmm. if I was going wrong. Mm -hmm. And so I would give counsel based on my own experience that yeah. you marry a woman that you admire, mm -hmm. Uh, you don't marry for looks necessarily. You marry this is what for we are the doing these days. yeah. You marry the for the inner wife, person. You know? Oh yeah. Look, my wife was beautiful. Yeah. Um, when I saw her, mm -hmm. I went round the block and came back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. So I found. I think I kind of married somebody who was like my mother. Mm -hmm. I knew the attributes that I wanted. Yeah. She had to be a good wife, a good mother. A wife who honored my parents, a wife who understood my culture mm -hmm. um, and background that she could go mm -hmm. but in the same vein she could be accompanying me to Wall Street for and, business. Oh yes. So that level of sophistication mm -hmm. is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to show off. Yeah. I had seen many beautiful mm -hmm. show-offs. Yes. I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. So I was clear. So when I found the one, uh, you know, at age 19, mm. I never looked elsewhere, you wow. know, in terms of a wife. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, I think we are still together. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 33 years. Yeah. Anniversary loading. Ooh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> On the 24th of December. <laughs> yes. And so I'll do something special for Caroline. She uh -huh. remains my best friend mm -hmm. when I have a really funny joke. Yeah. I want to tell her first, you know, kind of. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that's what marriage is yeah. all about. Somebody you want to tell your story mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Somebody who, in your lows, mm -hmm. who will be with you yeah? in sure. your tough times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think Caroline's seen the highs. I've been to the top of the mountain. Yes. I've also been under the ocean. Yo. And she has been consistently, mm -hmm. constantly mm -hmm. there. Loving me through what's and all. I'm not the best husband. <laughs> <laughs> because these days, uh, you know, like I said, marriages, especially for this generation, this uh, young generation. I end up foot. I end up because they raise Some are complaining that you got to be I in Toto in this. I papa, papa, I tell you, I don't know what to do. I don't know to do. I something. Because in Ruk Gutskan, I must say she's been a wonderful mother to my kids. That's, that's very powerful. So, you know, uh, let us briefly look back from how it all started uh, to that. You know, born in the high density areas in high fields, uh, you know, mm. becoming one of the biggest mogul in, in the world. You know, ever imagined that uh, you would be this huge uh, one day? Well, I think you over exaggerate, uh, mm. <laughs> Ola. I'm not huge. I'm not a mogul <laughs> as such. But uh, thank you for the compliments. Uh -huh. I think, you know, growing up in high fields, Ta'akuriraku, uh, old high fields, Kukenan. And my world, Taitamba mm Chikweshe, -hmm. my parents didn't want me on the roads, mm -hmm. but whenever I could sneak out, yes. I would also kick that ball. <laughs> but this was fun, I would go to the motor, the wire, the madaka, you know. Yes. You? But our parents were businessmen. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, gave us uh, a better upbringing mm. than the average Highfields mm. kid. Yeah. So I was able to then go to multiracial schools. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what they yearned for. And I ended up at Regina Mundi, mm. Pakresh. Wow. And my sister. Uh -huh. My sister was recommended that I ended up Martindale Primary School. Mm -hmm. And then at St. John's High School, at Avondale, mm. Emerald Hill. So from there, Dopagaito independence, the transition mm -hmm. to go to group A schools, yeah. the opportunity was there. And I went to Churchill, mm. uh, Boys High, wow. where ultimately I became a head of hostel, the first black head of hostel. Oh, 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 that's powerful. And a school prefect, uh -huh. and then soccer captain. Uh -huh. 
we bora played volleyball <laughs> <tenna>. <laughs> oh bola ndagari tamba ndagari to jaza bora yes yeah so i mean uh Churchill boys I think we lost just one game mm. to Marlborough High okay. in the final year Coca Cola mm-hmm. Cup I have fun with Marlborough yeah but otherwise I played soccer mm-hmm. I carried that through by UZ yes. we formed uh, Team Yedu mm-hmm. yeah, into Ghostbusters wow your man knows brigade tika netsa tika win a vice chancellor's <laughs> cup uh-huh. eh, Ikoko And so yeah I I played soccer mm-hmm. I played basketball basketball as well yeah wow. and I got national colors ndakatamba mm. ku first africa games yakaitwa mm-hmm. ku jamahiri ya tripoli mm-hmm. in libya okay so i played uh, national uh, for the national team in terms wow. of basketball i didn't know that oh yeah I got to yeah. tell you something yeah. because you research so well. Exactly. So I had to throw in something <laughs> ah, you nice, didn't know. Right. I like that. Yeah, but I played tennis. So I was very sporty mm-hmm. and I think that's carried on yes. to my kids as well. Van on tamba rugby, bora tennis mm-hmm. at quite a competitive level. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the fear boy mm-hmm. I think has come a long way. Yes, I now I can see. I can uh-huh. tell. <laughs> yeah. So you were you were raised in an entrepreneurial you know, family with your father and your uncle being operators, you know, of a public transport company, Modern Express, mm. uh, before diversifying into, you know, retail shops, you know, did your background influence you somehow, you know, uh, to be the businessman you are today? I think so. I think so. I come from a rich heritage, mm-hmm. uh, Ola. Uh, bus company the very first re- registered bus company mm-hmm. in southern rhodesia was that very company modern express wow. omnibus wow. so the very first black owner mm-hmm. of a bu- bus company domat sekurangu iwayo wow and then vana baba uh, inherited uh, that and and went on to have a fleet of 30 buses wow yeah Uh, the first mall mm-hmm. uh, shopping mall mm-hmm. uh, kulusaka ukashika kulusaka saka pia kwa kwa ifrid eh mm-hmm. yakavakwa na na baba wangu ah. eh ni madzikoma awo uh-huh. yeah saka ndo shopping complex ka moving away from uh, uh, grocery shops mm-hmm. which they had yeah. nema bottle stores mm-hmm. which my dad still has Now. Oh yeah. At 93. Dad, oh yeah. Kwa nyamweda ndaka kurira kuseri kwe counter tichirenga mari. Kumondoro. Kumondoro. Wow. Eh, saka ndo makurirangu. Mm-hmm. Saka I saw within my dad and his brothers mm-hmm. that uh, they were independent. Uh, they supported the liberation struggle mm-hmm. so they put their money where their mouth is. Mm. Zanu pa yaka formwa kwa ifirids. Mm-hmm. Story ana mdara pama chipisa paya yes. yakatumbo peace kwa neve zapu okay e, paita bongo zozo ipapa eh eh but they were well known mm-hmm. to support mm-hmm. the the struggle yeah and um, then my dad supported a soccer team mm-hmm. he loved uh, sport like yeah. i do mm-hmm. uh, pane team ya inzi black hunters mm-hmm. ya itamba mzimbabwe grounds muya okay that was the introduction for me yes. uh, to soccer and oh, sport oh yes and then vanga vari muchibuku ya inzi chibuku ikazoita black aces vanga vari mu organizing committee oh, yacho ikoko nice. eh, pag, pagwanzura mm-hmm. so my dad and his brothers were always engaged in national issues mm-hmm. they were always engaged in community issues mm-hmm. and i am just a chip of the old block so to speak <laughs> in the sense that i'm a community player mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. A, a patriot in loving national issues mm-hmm. uh, i've had the privilege of chairing Uh, the Zimbabwe Investment Authority mm-hmm. I've sat on the National Arts uh, Council mm-hmm. I've also been involved in the Housing Benefit Fund for the Army wow all part and parcel of what I would deem yes. community yes. projects yes. and involvement mm-hmm. so yeah that's very very powerful dog and uh, like you said my my tambira muri kuseri kwaunda kwa nyamwe dog you know uh, ababiri kwenu you know out of curiosity so were yeah. you rewarded you know <laughs> or your parents were that kind of ababiri uh, kuti aba hore se mwana because it took over the rafis and everything ah 
ipapo inonzi child labor kana mahakudaro exploitation ye child labor cha ndotone case na vachana kira na sekurisha kira but eh, mama waidao kuti tichengete huku dzavo mm-hmm. eh kuseri kwe yard taigara ne huku ne mazai yes and uh, funny enough my own son mm-hmm. has also carried on that tradition mm. so he does chickens yes. and uh, sells the eggs uh-huh. and that's also part of his side hustle nice but no kukura kwa taka ita kwa ifiritsi but right now got to mwana wa mwana kuti ndo no taiza ano fungo ndo ndiriko meserwa but this is why you know being an entrepreneur you know uh, i think there's a lot to learn very true uh, and humility mm-hmm. you know for us it wasn't child labor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Eh uh, whether we end up fanka pa Christmas pana hapa waito ndikumsha eh eh saka inda hizi hauti ndikuenda kwa seke yeah. kana ndikuenda kumtoro uh-huh. kufami ya sekuru oh, ya ye kwa mama that's chivu yeah oh yes saka ndo kwataka kurira ikoko ah, but nice. gejo kati ndipa gejo so unotosha <laughs> mauti a ah, uh-huh. mkuru you anto <laughs> to manya na busman <laughs> the, the time you went to school um nezikoro za matara is then zvaka zvaka wanda you know like um zvazviri uh, mouth racial mm-hmm. yeah so racism then was was real i understand how different were you treated from others well look at it this way when we went to the multiracial christian schools that is martindale mm-hmm. and st john's high we lived well together we really didn't know too much about racism mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in dakura ne makarad yeah yeah so i guess you can even pick the accent exactly, exactly. so we mingled quite mm-hmm. comfortably mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the nuns who were white wanted us mm-hmm. to mingle in a non racist fashion mm-hmm. and so i think that bore in me a multiculturalism mm-hmm. i appreciated the culture yes and i always laugh or laugh because I confess to a childhood con- confusion mm-hmm. because you might remember to which Karada the colored folks mm-hmm. were actually part of the Rhodesian army mm. and so they would refer to the terrorists and their the terminology they call the ters mm-hmm. saka inini ndabva ikoko ndozoenda kumba baba vari kuzhanu vano support the struggle exactly uh, you know with his brothers vano tumira makaki eh ne famous shoe yeah eh kune vakomana eh maneru we are listening to radio zimbabwe exactly and it yaitwa na webster sham yeah 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 mozambique oh yeah yeah which was illegal so i grew up a bit confused mm-hmm. do i support the rhodesian army yes. or do i support our command yeah, because yeah. we were so integrated mwanawe mm. kuchikora i'll tell you one incident i remember it so distinctly vana baba wavo vechikarad they were friends of mine the dad got shot mm. and we cried takache hey. manai hey. a rhodesian mm. uh, army guy mm-hmm. And then on the other hand a sekuru angwi nini was conscripted by force hey. into the Rhodesian yeah. army yeah and he served ku lowland in barracks mm-hmm. ku blawayo mm-hmm. eh saka on the one hand i mean kubata fn rifle takato mm-hmm. dzidzao you know from him yeah because he would give us his war stories mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then on the other hand ndangandi no vakoma madzikoma mm-hmm. yeah. and you might know ndine an uncle Godfrey uh, Chanakira ku okay. Heroes Eka mm-hmm. saka mm-hmm. vana godi baundi godi mm-hmm. were part and parcel of the struggle mm. and were commanders you know in the struggle yeah saka background iyo ii inokosha because you know could did such a kawanda and that's mm-hmm. why i guess for me this whole business of unity yes. and integration mm-hmm. is part and parcel of me because mm. i grew up on both sides yes yes and so to get independence mm-hmm. and a zimbabwe where people were unified mm-hmm. was something that is 
was there to be marveled mm. because that was the dream Zimbabwe for yes, me. Yes, yes, true. Yeah. And uh, after you completed uh, your studies at university, mm. you secured a job as an economist with RBZ in 1989 to 1994. I'm sure, you know, uh, only the best were chosen. <laughs> and you being amongst the best, it must have been something huge uh, for you, was it? It was, because at the, in the day, um, we were in a class of economists, there were about 190 of us. Mm. Uh, Ipopa used yeah. APA. And uh, if you wanted a job at the central bank, they chose you if you had an upper second class pass mm, mm, mm. or a first class degree, yes. which was rare. Yeah. So I was fortunate. I was among the six, mm -hmm. uh, graduated top six in my class. Mm -hmm. And so we were offered a job at the Central Bank, wow. uh, Barclays Bank mm -hmm. and Standard Chartered Bank. That's but awesome. the most prestigious institution Eesh. at yeah. the apex of the financial system uh -huh. was the Reserve Bank. And so with great pride, mm -hmm. we went along and worked at the Reserve Bank. That's powerful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here on the Aula 7 podcast. You're talking to Dr. Nigel Chanakira. You know, and in 1986, you were picked by the World Economic Forum, mm -hmm. you know, as a future global leader, uh, future global leader, and went to Davos, Switzerland uh, for a global business forum. I would like to believe, I mean, that uh, the opportunity opened so many doors for you. Absolutely. It came as a total surprise. I was two years having founded Kingdom Securities, as it was then known. Mm -hmm. uh, you might know Ola. I became a millionaire with my partners within mm -hmm. one year. One year. Yes. And uh, we were doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. We had a program on TV called mm -hmm. Making Money Make Sense. Yes, yes. And so before I knew it, the world began to recognize this little boy mm -hmm. from Highfields mm -hmm. along with my four business partners. Wow. So I was selected to become a global leader of mm -hmm. tomorrow, GLT, mm -hmm. as it was then known. And then that then transitioned to YGLs, mm -hmm. which are the young global leaders. Yes. And so from that age of 28 through to 40, mm. I received tutelage yeah. from the World Economic Forum mm -hmm. about leadership. Yes. And so it allowed us to wine and dine with presidents mm -hmm. uh, and uh, business, real business moguls. I, think, you, I, have you you it, um, I wanted to ask about Bill Gates. Oh, yeah. Mm. I had the privilege of, of meeting Bill and Melinda Gates. Mm. And I always recount how funny it was. <laughs> I think there were probably about a hundred of us mm -hmm. that were invited for a breakfast meeting mm -hmm. with Bill and Melinda Gates. And that very morning, we were mimicking whatever they were doing. Mm -hmm. Normally, somebody would have had cereal for breakfast. But that morning, because Bill and Melinda Gates mm -hmm. had fruit salad for <laughs> breakfast, <laughs> guess what we all had? Oh. Fruit salad ran out that morning oh. because everyone wanted to eat fruit salad, fruit salad yes. and they said maybe greatness lies in the fruit salad <laughs> you know what i mean but what a privilege to be able to rub shoulders uh, to sit uh, have a conversation mm -hmm. with the likes of uh, bill gates mm -hmm. uh, i met aleko dangote courtesy oh. of world economic forum wow. i met uh, presidents uh, bill clinton mm -hmm. tabo mbeki wow you know, being able to be in the same place with mm, them for mm. one week, wow. uh, participate in thought leadership topics. That's big. Oh, yeah. That's so big. that perpetually changed my life, mm -hmm. you know, in the sense that I learned to aspire for greatness. Mm -hmm. I learned to think beyond profits and begin to think of the populace, the planet, mm -hmm. you know, global issues then came to the fore in my own life. Mm. And then being able to invest in communities, I set up the Chanakira Education Trust. Mm -hmm. uh, I began to engage in health issues mm -hmm. from a global perspective. 
I think the YGL program also took me to Harvard mm -hmm. uh, University. Yes. Uh, we were able to do a six-week executive development program mm -hmm. at Harvard, mm. uh, courtesy of WIF. And surprise, surprise, uh, Ola, mm -hmm. because of that experience and yeah. exposure, mm -hmm. uh, when I then retired or was retired from the young global mm -hmm. leaders mm -hmm. uh, at age 40, I then determined to set up networks within Zimbabwe mm. so that we could connect with the, the World Economic Forum. Yes. And so as a result, I set up the Global Shapers Communities mm -hmm. uh, in uh, 2012 and uh, we've been ongoing ever since. Mm -hmm. We're young people. Uh, we now have five hubs in Zimbabwe. Wow. And they are committed to improving the state of Zimbabwe mm -hmm. specifically. And they get exposures. We've got a young man going to Davos mm -hmm. in uh, January, February. Wow. Uh, he will uh, full, be fully funded mm -hmm. like I was. Yeah. So uh, we fund these youngsters to go and wine and dine. Mm -hmm. You know, the big wigs of the world. Yes. They meet yes. politi political leaders, mm -hmm. business leaders, religious leaders. Mm -hmm. They get to know, you know, the thinking, mm -hmm. uh, modernity. Yes. And then come back home and shape their communities in Harare, mm -hmm. Bulawayo, Chitungwiza, uh, um, Mutare, mm -hmm. where we have hubs uh, for global shapers communities. Mm. And then out of those, I also then get the privilege of nominating what we call the outliers, mm -hmm. the outstanding young people, yeah. you know, the geniuses that the genius, you are exactly. you are interviewing. Yes. We get to pick them then mm -hmm. and offer them support wow. and then also get them exposed mm -hmm. on these uh, visiting uh, visits and trips. Wow. We also then get to pick them to participate mm -hmm. in the World Economic Forum meetings mm -hmm. in Africa. There's always a continental one specifically for mm -hmm. Africans. Normally it's held in Cape Town. We did host one in Harare mm. actually. Oh. Yeah. We I think we did that in two thousand and six mm -hmm. when I became a young global oh, leader yes, yes. because it's a rotating mm -hmm. thing. And one dream I still have is to be able to host the World Economic Forum a meeting mm -hmm. in the Victoria Falls. Okay. I think that's something that's still on my radar mm -hmm. and my agenda. Yeah. So that the WIF Africa comes to to Zimbabwe, to Zimbabwe again. Well. Yeah. yeah. So you then left uh, the institution and embarked on an, an entrepreneurial journey, you mm -hmm. know, and formed Kingdom of Financial Holding in the year 1994. And, uh, and together with your four partners, like you said earlier, a, a black owned bank, you know, and you are one of the Africans, you know, to own uh, and run a bank. Uh, that level. Mm -hmm. What made you choose that path? Well, I think it's credit to, number one, I always had a dream of setting up my own business mm -hmm. because of my roots. Yeah. Uh, the Chanakiras rarely work for mm -hmm. somebody. Mm. And we work to gain experience yes. and exposure. Mm -hmm. But because my, Baba Edu, my businessmen, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we tend to aspire for that. Yeah. So for me... It was answering to a family aspiration mm, yeah. where you answer to yourself, mm -hmm. so to speak, as a yeah, businessman. Yeah. That independence was mm -hmm. in me. And then secondly, uh, I worked in the central bank, as mm -hmm. you know, and the governor at the time, Dr. Kombo Moyana, mm -hmm. I give him a lot of credit because yeah. he mentored us. Mm -hmm. And he kept asking the question, why can't blacks form banks? Mm. You guys are the managers. Yes. You guys are yes. the directors. Yes. And I was I made a director at 24. Mm. 24? Yeah. I'm probably still one of the youngest bank directors mm -hmm. in a formal banking institution. Wow. So at Bard Discount House, mm -hmm. they, uh, you know, made me a director, um, you know, and mm -hmm. I was uh, a fund manager at mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then Ikokubad, we had two gentlemen who are the pioneers of banking, mm -hmm. black-owned banking enterprises. Yes. Uh, Nick Vingirai uh, with his partner, mm -hmm. uh, the late Gibson Muringai. Mm -hmm. So they left Bad and went to form Intermarket mm -hmm. Discount House. So they were the torchbearers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And for me, I kind of replaced them oh, yes. in the directorate. Yes. 
because I then took over as a director mm-hmm. in the positions that they had mm-hmm. occupied. Mm-hmm. And so they being the pioneers, I was watching them closely. Mm-hmm. And then I think two years after they started, I then uh, went to Empritec, mm-hmm. an entrepreneurial school, yes. which was run by Titima Siwa mm-hmm. and Musibango. Yeah. And those two became my mentors and coaches for starting my own business. Mm. Yeah, Barclays Bank at the time also ran a start your own business uh, uh, okay. workshop. workshop okay. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I attended that. Again, guess who sponsored mm. me? My dad paid for me to wow. do that. Oh, wow. And so with that exposure uh-huh. of the start your own business and then also the Empritec, mm-hmm. I felt with uh, my postgraduate studies, mm-hmm. Uh, I felt I was ready to then launch my own business. Mm. And the best way I've always believed is to be a co-owner. Yeah. And so with Frankie Kufa, Lysia Sibanda, Solomon Mgavazi, mm-hmm. Bag of Purohit, they are rarely spoken about, yes, yes. but they were my partners mm-hmm. and we launched Kingdom, Kingdom. Securities mm. at the time, yes. which then transitioned to the when Kingdom Bank. Kingdom Financial, Financial Holdings. Oh, yeah! Wow. After we acquired a listed company, mm-hmm. the discount company of Zimbabwe. In uh, October 2009, uh, you stepped down from your post of CEO following a dispute with some, you know, shareholders. Mm. What was the dispute about? Well, at 2009, I had then merged, or we had merged Kingdom with Mikkels, mm-hmm. and you will remember that Kingdom Mikkels saga. It was heralded and still is the biggest transaction that was done on the stock exchange. Mm -hmm. It merged three companies and created the behemoth that was called Kingdom Mikkels Africa. Mm -hmm. So it was a conglomerate which I ran. And unfortunately, with the shareholders, it's in the press, uh, shareholder dispute over funds Mm -hmm. uh, belonging to the company led then to a separation with the Meekles mm-hmm. group. Mm. And then I took back Kingdom mm-hmm. and then recapitalized it uh, with a new partner, yeah. AfroAsia, mm-hmm. who I then left mm-hmm. in 2012, mm-hmm. 2013, yeah. to then run it. Mm-hmm. And then I undertook a new journey mm-hmm. and created the new Nigel that you see today, <laughs> exactly. who is a mentor and a coach. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in leadership development. But, uh, you know, for something you had started from humble beginnings, uh, growing to becoming one of the biggest bank in, in the country, mm-hmm. uh, couldn't you have found I mean, ways to resolve your differences? Well, look, I, we tried mm-hmm. and sometimes just like a marriage, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I think uh, something is over like a business, Mm -hmm. a business isn't like a marriage for life. Mm -hmm. If you and the parties involved don't feel right about it, Mm -hmm. uh, there was a power play. Yeah. uh, You know, and you can't have two, three bulls Mm. in a crawl. Mm. Mm. Uh, There's always always one. Yeah, they'll always be fighting. Yeah. And so, in our wisdom, mm-hmm. we decided to go our separate ways. Mm. And I think I'm the richer for it. Oh. Yeah, personally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because I think once you go on your own, mm-hmm. you got to lick your wounds. Mm-hmm. you got to pick yourself up from the floor mm-hmm. and then, you know, chart a new, a new course. Mm-hmm. And I think I've done that. Yeah. Being able to realize my God-given potential mm-hmm. and create a name in different fields. Mm-hmm. So I can easily say the banking arena, I left a name, mm-hmm. uh, a legacy, which my kids can follow mm. through on. Mm. My kids, I have one son uh, who would like to carry on in the financial services mm-hmm. field, mm-hmm. and I'm there to guide and mentor him. Wow. Yeah. And uh, in 2011, like you said, yeah, you de emerged, I mean, Kingdom from the Kingdom Makers Group and mm. formed Kingdom Financial Holdings Limited. In 2013, you sold 30% uh, shareholding in, uh, to Afro Asia, mm-hmm. um, Kingdom Zimbabwe, and ex- exited the financial institution to pursue other interests. But um, I want to know was it time to let go, or it's a decision you were forced to take? 
Well, I think it's a combination of things. Uh, well, uh, it was no longer fun. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm, I'm well known to say that I am in business, mm-hmm. number one, to glorify God, number two, to have fun, mm-hmm. number three, to service uh, clients uh, and thrill them, mm-hmm. and number four, to, to make money mm. and lots of money. Yes. And if you check on those four criteria why I am personally in business, mm-hmm. I was no longer glorifying God mm. in that setup. Okay. I couldn't control it. Mm. I was no longer enjoying the ride. Mm. And uh, my teams have always been teams that enjoy the journey. Yes. Uh, so I was no longer enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Uh, number three, uh, were we adequately servicing clients? Mm-hmm. I don't think so uh, anymore as well as we did. We mm-hmm. were no longer the innovative pioneering group that we were, if you remember, Ola, mm-hmm. I, I brought in-store banking yes. into Zimbabwe. Wow. I am also the pioneer of cell phone banking mm. in Zimbabwe okay. with our cell card. Mm. So I did a lot of pioneering work. Mm-hmm. Uh, derivatives mm-hmm. were introduced into the markets, mm-hmm. uh, you know, through Kingdom. Unit yes. trusts yeah. were popularized mm. through Kingdom. So I had my good run, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in that arena. It was time I felt now to chart a new course. Mm -hmm. I had acquired a franchise in the year 2000 for leadership development Mm -hmm. called SMI, LMI, and FMI, as you pointed out earlier Mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. I had used the material personally to develop myself as a young leader. And I felt very strongly that those programs needed, number one, to be taken to other Africans Mm -hmm. And then number two, they needed to be digitalized. And so I made a personal quest and commitment to the founder, Mm -hmm. Paul J. Meyer, who was a personal mentor, Mm -hmm. that I was going to popularize these programs Mm -hmm. to Africans. And then I was also going to help with the digitalization process Mm -hmm. for those programs. And so I've spent the last 10 odd years uh, doing that on a full time mm. basis, mm. I couldn't do it full time. Yeah, and uh, the last ten years, I've been heavily invested. Wow, we've created uh, fascinating platforms mm-hmm. to coach and mentor people. But while it's the just cost, a, um, a, a dog. Sorry to uh-huh. interject. Um, what happened to those who have? I mean, who had a, a saved their money uh, through your bank? Uh-huh. So remember, there is a successor bank. I exited and took with me the name and brands of Kingdom Mm -hmm. because I felt I was Kingdom. Kingdom, yeah. Yeah. So they stayed in Mm Afro-Asia. Afro-Asia Bank carried on. It is the successor bank Mm -hmm. to Kingdom Bank. Mm -hmm. So Kingdom Bank no longer existed. Mm -hmm. Afro-Asia bought the bank. So did these people get their money? The depositors carried on. Mm -hmm. And even when Afro-Asia, and I think this is important to clarify very Mm -hmm. carefully, Afro-Asia did not go bust. Mm -hmm. They didn't go broke. Mm. They exited Zimbabwe. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's different from closing Closing. down. Mm -hmm. Okay? They They exited Zimbabwe. Yeah, they had liquidity challenges Mm -hmm. and were no longer to prepare, they were no longer prepared to pump in more money. Mm. They had already put in about 30 odd million Mm -hmm. into the equity and debt structure Mm -hmm. by the shareholders Mm -hmm. of Afro-Asia Bank as it was then Mm -hmm. known. Afro-Asia Bank Zimbabwe. Yeah. And so after pumping in more more money they felt they no longer could afford to Mm -hmm. carry on with this venture Mm -hmm. in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Remember, Afro-Asia opened in South Africa. Yes. They had a Mauritian bank, Mm -hmm. and they made a decision to cut their losses. So when they surrendered the bank license, Mm -hmm. a liquidator was put in charge of of, uh, Afro-Asia Bank. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know much about it. The depositor protector was also there to safeguard the Mm -hmm. depositors. Mm -hmm. So all depositors were gradually paid off Mm. 
And some even today have not claimed their deposits okay. from Afro-Asia banks. Probably maybe it's because they d- don't really know where to Ex- claim the money. They or go to the deposit pro- mm-hmm. depositor protection. Mm-hmm. He is there. Mm-hmm. That's what he's there for. Yeah. And the liquidators have since left. Mm-hmm. Uh, Grant Thornton, mm-hmm. you know, did the selling of assets mm-hmm. uh, of Afro-Asia Bank. And there is a surplus, you know, uh, amount that is still uncollected from the um, depositors. A lot of people are still crying for our And, uh, you know, your name is uh, at the center stage of this issue. Well, it's, it's a pity that people don't follow developments mm-hmm. and understand, you know, what these deposits mean. Mm-hmm. And so for the record, yeah. let me say this once and for all. Mm-hmm. I would like to say this once, yes. as they say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a person can form a bank. A person can then also sell a bank. Mm-hmm. And I formed kingdom. And then I sold it. Mm-hmm. And that's a constitutional right. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's my personal right to make a decision mm-hmm. uh, whether I start a business, pass it on to my children, or decide to sell it. Mm-hmm. And I made that decision. For me, it was a quality life decision mm-hmm. because there was a minimum capital requirement mm-hmm. that was required by the Reserve Bank they stipulated a hundred million U.S. dollars mm-hmm. as minimum capital. I didn't have that, mm. uh, Ola. Yeah. The bank was capitalized to the tune of twenty-two million dollars. Mm. I own thirty-four uh, percent of the bank, as, yeah. as you said. Mm-hmm. And so, when I was paid out my portion, mm-hmm. and new people took over the bank in a transaction sanctioned and permitted. Mm by the central bank, Mm -hmm. then I cannot be held responsible and accountable Mm -hmm. for something which is not mine. Mm. Because Afro-Asia became the new owners. Afro-Asia put their own board Mm. of directors. Mm. Mm. Are we together? Yes. I issued a public statement on the 5th of September 2013. Mm -hmm. And you can look for it. Uh, It's there. Mm -hmm. And I said, I have nothing anymore to do with this bank. Mm. I was exiting. Yeah. Now, if the bank collapses 18 or closes rather 18 months after, Mm -hmm. why do you want to hold me (laughs) accountable (laughs) and responsible? It's no fun by saying, are we together? Yeah. So, of course, I empathize. I'm I'm a a human being. Mm -hmm. I I, I empathize with any losses Mm -hmm. and the consequent losses of an associated bank. Yeah. Kingdom Bank Africa mm-hmm. because of the closure of Afro Asia mm-hmm. Bank Zimbabwe. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. So it does take understanding, it does take interviews such as these. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> exactly. I'll be arrested. <laughs> Would they allow me to? But uh, didn't yeah. that affect your, you know? the trust that people had in you then and now say ah could we still deal with this man but uh, after because uh, most of uh, them they didn't really understand like what you're saying right now uh, you know ignorance is no excuse yeah and yeah. ignorance of the law is worse mm. when you blame me <laughs> uh, you get you get what i mean yeah it doesn't work like that mm-hmm. unfortunately yeah and sometimes we lack the understanding, sometimes we lack the sophistication, mm-hmm. which is why, Ola, uh, I, I, I am free to walk the streets. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I'm still the same Nigel. Mm-hmm. I never change my number. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't change a number. Exactly. I change a town. Uh-huh. I would not live in Harare. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. Yeah. So I think people, there's no harm in not knowing. Mm-hmm. There's no harm in not asking. There's no harm in not finding mm-hmm. out. Maridzenyu. Mm-hmm. The Afro Asia Bank, Ziri Kokwa Depositor Protector, mm-hmm. my shareholder, Marit Zeni. Unfortunately, of course, 
the erosion of time. Mm-hmm. I even my US dollar yeah. panaka buda 2030. Mm-hmm. Currency yaka ita se? Yaka ipo chinji. Ah, saka ipa po kandopa ne panotanga kutu. Saka kandopa ne kakutu nyura kachofutu. Eh, heka. Saka, but <laughs> am I to blame? That's a national <laughs> law, ola. <laughs> saka, wakuta hunditi nini naizyo nduwa kachinji. No, it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and for me, the genuine clients, mm-hmm. the people that put their trust in me, guess what? Mm. The moment I left, mm-hmm. the moment I made that announcement, that mm-hmm. announcement was on radio, it was in the press, mm-hmm. not just in one newspaper, everywhere. national newspaper, mm-hmm. it was everywhere. Mm-hmm. People knew Nigel has left. Mm-hmm. And people cried about it. Mm-hmm. There were clients to this day that still say to me, Vura Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why? Because the service was unparalleled. Mm-hmm. Why? Because the staff were well treated. Why? because the, re- the returns that they obtained through unit trusts or equities are returns that they haven't experienced mm-hmm. before. Mm. So I empathize with them. And of course, the Clarion Corps, there are still people who entrust me. Mm-hmm. Maybe, as you say, Pangwana, who under say exactly. last time, the, yeah. you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But Mangwana, Dikarivura, I will call it kingdom. Mm. Yeah. Why? Because Reserve Bank the central bank, the mm-hmm. authority, and the Ministry of Finance, mm-hmm. the superintendent, would know the sequence of events mm-hmm. around uh, Kingdom. But do you still have the intention to open another bank? Well, personally, I would never run a bank. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can help direct. Uh, right now, I have clients that are banks, mm-hmm. uh, you know, who consult me, mm-hmm. I coach, I mentor. There's a bank I'm working with at the moment. Mm-hmm. I, I just love what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And watch the space. They'll mm. go places. Yeah. Uh, if my son wants mentorship, who mm-hmm. wants to go banking, uh, guess what? Mm. Uh, I'm there, uh, you know, to do that. But so, I've since moved on. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a mentor. I'm a coach. I, I'm in the learnership space. Mm-hmm. I'm in the fintech space. That's where I'm invested, mm-hmm. uh, financial Uh, services technologies banking systems mm-hmm. uh, that's that's the new nigel mm. uh, that you see so i'm no longer the investment banker but if you want investment banking mm-hmm. advice if you want to do a startup uh, here's your coach i've been up there down there and you know god takes you through that mm. to be able to coach and mentor people properly yeah yeah sure and so Yeah. In 2013 you ventured into leadership coaching. Yes. Um is this where the SMI, LMI and FMI come in? That's precisely so. Oh, so please tell us more about that. Okay. So 20 shall I say 30 years ago. Mm. Soon after I started Kingdom, I realized comparatively I was the youngest bank CEO mm-hmm. at 27. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, being licensed at 28 mm. and then competing with people who were older, smarter, more experienced, mm-hmm. more exposed than mm-hmm. I was, I intentionally went on a leadership development journey for myself. Mm-hmm. And I looked around. I had a postgraduate degree. Mm-hmm. I had done numerous uh, banking and uh, business courses. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love learning. And from all my learnings, remember I had also been exposed to Harvard University and Oxford mm-hmm. uh, ultimately. Uh, I then decided which was the best course that I should pick for myself mm. and fund myself. Mm-hmm. So at 28, I registered for an SMI course. Mm-hmm. I did a course called The Dynamics of Successful Management. Because I wanted to be a successful manager, manager. Mm. and the rest is history. That course changed my life. Mm. Yeah, it taught me the nuances of managing well wow. at a global level, mm. and so I used that material to also then coach my own staff mm-hmm. and put them through the courses. Uh, the the front office people did the sales effective selling strategies mm-hmm. course and guess what the market share grew from less than 1% to 8.5% wow. 
within seven years. Wow, that's big. So consistently, constantly, uh, those who were leaders, I wanted them to be effective mm-hmm. leaders. They did the effective leadership development program. Mm-hmm. So guess what? I reared champions within the arena of kingdom. Mm-hmm. So having discovered that the courses work for me, the courses and programs work for my staff, Mm -hmm. I also introduced FMI, same methodology Mm. for my children. And I raised champions. I have four champions Mm -hmm. coming out of my own household. Wow. And I call it giving my kids the unfair advantage. Mm. Are we together? Yes. So, you know, Ola, if something is so good, you can't hide it Mm -hmm. to yourself, your family, and your staff. Yes. So in the year 2000, I acquired the franchise Mm -hmm. for Zimbabwe for those programs. Mm. And to date, over 8,500 people within sub-Saharan Africa Mm -hmm. are graduates from that institute. Wow. So I call it uh, Success Motivation Institute African. So are you still the chairperson? I am indeed the chairperson. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I say, I mean, this year alone, uh, we've had clients here in Zim, clients mm-hmm. in Malawi, clients in the UK, uh, South Africa, uh, come in. Mm-hmm. Why? Because from 2020, following covid We've now digitalized the programs mm-hmm. so people can learn online. Oh, yeah. And I can coach and mentor them online. So, for interest sake, say yes. I want to take part in these coaching classes. Uh-huh. What is required of me? Just select your course mm-hmm. and we help you. I talk you through. Mm-hmm. I look at your CV. I look at your aspirations. Uh, we agree together the mm-hmm. sort of skills you need to get to the next level, mm. whatever your next level is. Mm-hmm. And then we pick, we've got over 40 programs, and we pick the appropriate one for you. Mm. And then I have the privilege of taking you through the program over after you 40 pay. programs? Yeah. Or oh, you pay something? Oh, yes. <laughs> There's never a free lunch. <laughs> no, no There's free no lunch. There's no free lunch, yeah. <laughs> I like and that. I have a faculty of six. Uh, people, six coaches oh. that work with me, mm-hmm. both in country and out Outside. of country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I work with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, running that global uh, franchise. Franchise. Okay, I like yeah. that. And uh, Doctor Chanakira, you argue that uh, you know, in a court, God gave us a brain, and that is more than uh, sufficient for us to make it. Close court. So you went on to say in a court again, despite the unfavorable uh, macroeconomic conditions in the country. I urge the young people to go for it. You went on to say, we need to hustle our way up as young people. Uh, close cut. So, Doctor, how do we hustle our way up in this harsh economy for ours? Well, I think Zim is challenging, you know, because of various issues, mm. okay, like hyperinflation. Mm-hmm like an exchange rate that tends to suffer slippage, you know, on an annual basis. Mm. And then, of course, the paucity of jobs and then the lack of capital Mm -hmm. to start up new enterprises. So you can argue there's a hypothesis that says Zim is hard. Mm -hmm. But then if you just keep looking at the hardness of Zim, you may never come out of it. Yes, yes. I also flip the coin and I say Zim is also an opportunity Mm -hmm. waiting to be had. Mm -hmm. It's Uh, an opportunity waiting waiting to to be be had. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. So those who are alert, those who can pick their industries based on their skill, knowledge, training, experience, exposure, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. will do very well in this economy. Yes. And look, Zim has created its own set of billionaires Mm -hmm. in this harsh environment. Mm. Zim has created its own multi-millionaires in this very harsh environment. Mm. So the two are coexisting. And you got to make your choice, uh, Ola. Okay. Am I going to, one, stay in Zim? Mm -hmm. And number two, am I going to make it in Zim? In Zim, yeah. And in which industry? Mm -hmm. And what skills do I need? Yes. 
that's where the fun begins. Mm. Uh, all mm. <laughs> because mm. Ipapo, you start seeing opportunities which other people cannot see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we together? Yes. So to me, even in this high hyperinflation environment, it means there is always an opportunity for a good player. Mm -hmm. There is always room in the marketplace for a good player. Okay. Mm. There is always room in the marketplace for people who do not despise humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. It's like a start where you are. Yeah. Start with That's what possible. you have. Start with, 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 with what's in your hands. Yes. What is in your hands? Unekamunda ere kumaruzevo. Remember, Bambaira, mm -hmm. Kurkunaya. Are we together? Yes. Get a high yield variety in Bambaira mm. and start there. But, 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 dog, you know, uh, what yeah. do you have to say to those who yeah. have been, you know, trying, uh, putting in the work, but nothing is coming out? It depends. Kakuti, what arena? Let's be practical. Kakuti, what arena? Because mm -hmm. each arena, each industry has champions. You or good try. Urgu dumira somewhere. <laughs> and it joka kuchukoro. <laughs> Come for mentorship. Exactly. Are we together? Yeah. Let's work this thing together. Mm -hmm. The word of God says, let's reason together. Saka mm -hmm. I am saying as a banker with years of experience, mm -hmm. uh, I want you to be the challenge. Yeah. Chukufura chukoro. Mm -hmm. Because when we were saying it's too elitist, mm. ye nyu ye SMI, exactly. mm. and in a 2000, exactly. and a, okay, fine. Come to a lower level school mm -hmm. where we will take you in batches of 300 mm. pakadoma. Yeah. The center of Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. magache mm -hmm. I've heard the cries of people. <laughs> Sakanduguti, come and register. We'll offer 45 trades. Mm -hmm. What, what is 45. 45 trades yeah. Yeah. where yeah. we will help people to get on top no of their games. No more crying, games. guys. No more crying. Exactly. It's not a solution. Uh -huh. <laughs> are we together? Yes. Yeah. So, speaking of the economy, you are part of uh, Network 58 and, uh, you know, the masses are crying foul of uh, the Zimbabwean situation from politics, economy, uh, social, etc. So, you always talk about three pillars that need to be considered to overcome the, I mean, that which uh, in a court, a reflection of our past, uh, to look back and see where we have gone wrong. I want you maybe to further elaborate on that, Doctor. Okay, so Network 58 is a group of committed Christians. I think there were 24 of us when we really got serious and we said, let's look at the challenges of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Let's brainstorm over them. Let's come up with a limited number of thematic topics mm. where we feel mm. we can make a difference. Yeah. And so we selected uh, uh, three areas. Mm -hmm. Number one, we determined that the value systems mm -hmm. of Zimbabwe were getting shot. In other words, we're losing our ethnic fiber. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm. and it, yeah. so we determined that our values are going to be important mm -hmm. and so we came up with three value or seven values that we would actually drive yes you know uh to to actually say how are we going to do better mm -hmm. you know respect accountability yes. integrity mm -hmm. you know values of that nature so that was one cluster, what we mm -hmm. call the values cluster. Mm -hmm. So we've got a team of us who are running with what we call our values. Mm -hmm. What should be our, our values, values. Mm -hmm. as, as, a as, people. A, as a people? Yeah. yeah. Then we went on and we said the politics is polluted and contaminated. And we went back in history. And we saw that, uh, you know, even the colonialists, when they came... Uh, they, they created that racial divide. And then we went through various political plays mm -hmm. that then include, you know, uh, sanctions uh, under UDI. Yes. We went through a liberation struggle. Mm -hmm. We then go to independence. We then go to Gukurahundi. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah. uh, those are all hustles. 
Then we come to an era in the 90s where MDCT is born out of the labor movement mm. and the friction and the deaths that have been caused mm -hmm. by this political friction. Mm -hmm. And now we are in a new era, yeah, triple C, yeah, 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 my recalls. Mm. All that is not conducive, mm -hmm. it's not inspiring, mm -hmm. uh, Ola. Yeah. Yeah. So what do we do as a people and as, as an organization? we decided that we needed a thematic, second thematic area, in on the peace uh, 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 and reconciliation mm -hmm. uh, 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 theme. Mm -hmm. There are people who will run with that theme and take it as far as they possibly mm -hmm. can go in order to keep our people united. Mm. If it means we are building museums, let them carry the correct history. Mm. Are we together? Not the dis distorted. Distorted. Uh -uh. Mm. No propaganda. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. And then I've just come from Kigali. Look at Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And it a nation that was botched up. Yeah. Where people butchered each other, mm. but can be reconciled for a purpose. Mm -hmm. So that became the second theme uh, of of Network Fifty Eight. Yeah. Yeah. And then the final one is obviously uh, 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 the economy. Mm -hmm. And this is my own forte. And that's the, the cluster that I'm in. Mm -hmm. To say, how can we have a better economy? What are the fundamental economic principles? What's the economic thought around having the right policies that dispense with hyperinflation, mm -hmm. that dispense with an unstable currency, yes. that dispense with unemployment, mm -hmm. So we become solution providers to government, to anybody who is interested, mm -hmm. to the local authorities, to the municipalities, mm -hmm. and we give them economic thoughts around the debt. Yeah. Right now, to not only a solution, mm -hmm. yet the debt crisis it in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. We spent time pondering over it. We've met with the authorities, mm -hmm. and right now I can make a declaration. Kuti, our thought leaders, 120 odd economists, mm -hmm. we've come round, select few, worked on the debt issue, mm -hmm. and we've got solutions. Wow! So when are we going to see the implementation of these, you know, so, um, solutions? Oh, 2024, you can expect Network 58, uh, you can expect uh, uh, the Economic Society, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm the outgoing president, mm -hmm. will be putting solutions on the table. Oh, interesting. So, but in all uh, uh, honesty, uh, uh, Doc, are we ever going to be a stable nation? Uh, in Ine, I believe, I am convinced in my spirit, man. I'm not convinced with head knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced in my gut that I will see a better Zimbabwe within my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming, of course, as a 57-year-old, mm -hmm. God will give me a long life yes. and I will see a better Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Already, we can see what we would call the green shoots mm. of a better Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Already, we can see things like the discipline of running a budget that is balanced already we can see infrastructure mm -hmm. being rehabilitated mm -hmm. or we can see new infrastructure being birthed these mm -hmm. are things we never saw before yeah 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 we were a nation that used to run a deficit mm -hmm. <laughs> and it we were a nation that printed money. Yes. And it, yeah. we've been clamoring against the printing mm -hmm. of money. Mm -hmm. As we mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Yeah. A minister of finance must be fired if he cannot can maintain stability in terms of the currency. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Yeah. Or central bank governor can't maintain the currency. Are we together? Mm -hmm. So those things are things that give me hope. That yes, we're a nation that has a history. Mm -hmm. It's not a glorious history, yes. I must add, you know, in terms of uh, the economic frontier. But I believe that we are shaping, we are modeling mm -hmm. uh, a better Zimbabwe. And uh, we had, uh, you know, our elections this year in August. Um, you voted, and I want to, you know, <laughs> oh, yes. find out from you, Doug, what do you think of the results? Uh, about the results? And also, do you think the results are going to change the current economic situation for the better? You know, 
the one thing people always forget is we historically have had bloody elections. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, as a young democracy, relatively, mm -hmm. a young independent nation over 40 odd years now, we are saying, I would hope we are over the hill mm -hmm. of butchering each other yes. for the vote. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Yeah. So, that's one big tick that I can credit the political players mm -hmm. with. And it, yeah. Free and fair, the jury is out. Mm -hmm. Why? Because one party couldn't go to the rural areas, yes. a major opposition party. We also saw some shenanigans at play. Are we together? Mm -hmm. Where fuzz exists and it's sought to vet and in the process kind of intimidate people. Uh, we saw uh, 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 ballot boxes not coming in on time in the local areas. My own wife was not on the voters' roll, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, things like that are never going to determine that we've had a free, fair, credible, peaceful election in Toto, mm -hmm. as they would say. And so from that perspective, it becomes checkered or mud. One would hope Zek, one would hope the judges would be independent so that we can hold in future free and fair elections and campaigns, etc. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Yeah. So that is what makes a democratic nation. That is what attracts international investment. That is what attracts locals from coming back home from the diaspora mm -hmm. because they believe that home kwakufamba kwaku garika mm -hmm. because there is stability politically and economically mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. for me i want to be able to tick the boxes just as an independent player as a businessman mm -hmm. i'm not a politician yeah. but i believe there is room for improvement mm -hmm. so if we can improve on our electoral processes uh, I think I would be happier. Mm -hmm. I think a lot more people would be happier. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, you know, with these recalls, uh, it, it speaks to even the party, the opposition party, mm. to get its act together. Mm -hmm. uh, are we together? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that these things don't happen in future. In future, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. So to me, I think our political land space is, is a bit messed up. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's improved, but not yet yeah, at the true. level mm -hmm. that I personally would tick it off. Mm. And in, I'm, I'm ticking it off just as a citizen. Yeah, I'm not eminently qualified like the real politicians <laughs> to, yes. to, 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 to determine its fate. But yeah. as a businessman, I believe good politics makes for good business. Mm. And I want to see good politics. Yeah. So when you started uh, your bank and other businesses, uh, other businesses, we were in, we were not in uh, US dollar era, mm. you know, we were not in a multi currency era, but yet you thrived. So what can you say about this? I didn't thrive. I prospered. You prospered, yes. <laughs> so what do you have to say about this? You know, multi currency era that and the I think we can prosper more. We can prosper more because the US dollar is international. Mm -hmm. 85% of our transactions are being done in the US, US dollar. dollar. When I am measured in terms of my net worth, it's easily comparable, mm -hmm. isn't it, with other nations. Mm. So for me, I mean, the, 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 we're in a better era, mm -hmm. <laughs> so to speak. Well, it's a better Multi-currency means I can also travel uh, and, and, and invest. Mm -hmm. I can move money around, you know, both locally, yeah. regionally, and internationally. internationally. Mm. Yeah, so from that perspective, I think mm -hmm. in terms of what opportunities it offers yes. us. Yes. If I can export mm -hmm. and have a retention of 80% of my currency in mm. hard currency, mm. ah, come on, I, I didn't grow up in that era. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Uh -huh. you, you can't see the good from the bad. Oh, yes, yeah. of course, we can't access capital mm -hmm. as readily uh, as loans. But then I always ask, mm -hmm. No, Ola, yeah. to tanga business, ne savings. Tienda yeah, not kukwereta. If you kwereta, kwereta from your family. Mm. I started a bank. Yeah. Nda kwereta kune mzimai wangu. Mm -hmm. Nda kwereta imba. Mm -hmm. 
Nken gire gate tenge se imba mae mwana. Mhm. Ndozo dzorera. I know credit a bank. Uh-huh. Because no bank was going to give me a loan to yes. start a bank. Yes. Are we together? Mm-hmm. Saka mm-hmm. ngati shinurei, ngati vrei meso, mm-hmm. ngati wonei ma opportunity. Not every crisis is a crisis. Mm-hmm. Some crises mean that we open our eyes yes. to what opportunities mm-hmm. reside there. Now uh, I'm not saying it's it's easy. Mhm. No, it's not. It's not easy. It was never easy. Mm-hmm. It's never going to be easy. Yes. If I were to tell, to tell you, oh, like, to starting a business is easy, mm-hmm. then I'm, I'm, I'm kidding you. I'm lying to you. <laughs> yeah. Starting a business is hard work. Mm. Starting a business is sacrifice. Mm. Starting a business is research. Starting a business is being mentored. Starting a business is copying and pasting. Mm. Starting a business is discarding some practices and innovating new ones. Wow. Are we together? Yes. So yeah, you know, do start. Mm-hmm. The more business people we have, the more successful an economy will mm-hmm. be. So although um, of course we can't all be business people. As some a business, are workers. As a businessman and also as an economist, mm. uh, what needs to be done for Zimbabwe to have a strong currency? I think for a strong currency we keep exporting more so that we build our reserves mm-hmm. and reserves mean your personal reserves it means sector reserves it means national reserves must be high mm-hmm. are we together yes. we thrive by exporting we thrive by producing more mm-hmm. the more we produce the more we can consume of our own goods that mm. makes for a strong currency look we're not importing wheat anymore it means those forex reserves are preserved for other areas mm-hmm. are we together yeah. why because farmers are in the game mm-hmm. uh, this year is a drought year it's a tough year for southern sub saharan africa so can, do, do, can we grow short varieties of crops mm-hmm. can we grow the the hard bearing crops uh, anamunga rapoko to be able to produce mm-hmm. you know sorghum which yes. is edible and we export that yes. into the yeah. region yeah even yeah. moringa mm-hmm. you know moringa porridge is mm. good uh, are we together yeah. all those are areas that are waiting for us i think cheme cheme tishingoti a drought ayo can i add drought ta kuita pfumvudza properly properly yeah do you know what pfumvudza properly is mm. uh, ola it's not doing five hectares ayo Ita one eighth of a hectare mm-hmm. yako ya uno diri zane ken yako mm-hmm. ita chera magoronga ano kwa na fifty two weeks mm-hmm. kuti uane ma bagid ekujiga wow. mm-hmm. dopu mvuta properly kwete eku nyepera na mm-hmm. yekuti gandi ite fifteen hectares ne pumvuta mm-hmm. aiyo in a drought year like this year we go back to basics. Mm-hmm to do proper pumvudza which means growing crops on time to standard and it mm-hmm. with joy yeah do pumvudza properly yo yo saka iwe neni atifanirwe kushaya chikafu gorerino gorerino why because waita an eighth of a hectare ya urukudiridza ne ken whether kwanaya kana uta kuna kunaya icho cho chichaita se chicha e that's enough to feed a family of six mm. So I see uh, you did some leadership courses at uh, Harvard, at uh, Oxford, Pacific, and Haggai. Uh, you know, these institutions in the United States of America. Uh, why did you choose to go to study abroad when we have got so many universities here in Zimbabwe? Panoka, I'm a product. You forget I'm a UZ product. Second, I'm a common way by UZ. Ndakaita undergraduate studies yangu pa UZ. Mm-hmm. Ndikaita postgraduate studies yangu pa UZ. UZ. Ndikaita Institute of Bankers with the Institute of Bankers in Zimbabwe. Mm. Kwa kuzobuda oka, you want knowledge, you exactly. want to grow. Zim mm-hmm. doesn't have it all. Yeah. Saka kwa kuzoita o IOBZ ku South Africa. Mm-hmm. Kwa kuenda oku London the home ya yeah, wanoti the city mm-hmm. uh, if you call yourself a banker and mm-hmm. you haven't been to the city we to to my course <laughs> to <a> banking <laughs> mulanda <laughs> it wants kwa kuti switzerland is the <laughs> home of what yeah. of money, money of yeah. asset management worega mm. kuenda ku zurich <laughs> kunoita o course kuzurik ungati uri banker rudzi apana aiwa <laughs> what do you have in store banking kune ma in store bank ku yes. ku america huko mm. 
he watches you to wall street is the the the, the beacon of of stock exchanges mm. and you call yourself a stock broker or sato mbushika aiwa azii azidaro still you have developed an application <laughs> for financial literacy yes uh, tell us more about that saka tine company yedu ya tinoti your risk flow mm-hmm. it is based ku job back and mm-hmm. i'm going to job back a couple of years and then in the end of my course pandaka enda ku winter banking school ye mm-hmm. ku south africa yeah ndo pandaka sangana ne mukomana i met a guy called don marey mm-hmm. and he was into this financial literacy mm-hmm. game yeah at a very high level mm. and using technology mm-hmm. at that mm-hmm. so i then brought don over and he helped us set up systems for banking mm-hmm. uh, for my trading uh, outfit in the kingdom securities so with him we then uh, when i left the banking world as a consumer of his product he then invited me to join his board mm-hmm. and uh, i became a board member and a shareholder in his fintech company mm-hmm. and then together we pioneered three apps mm. a cash flow optimizer for the individual you know the disa an individual how to manage their money mm-hmm. and project money five years into the future yes and then for the businessman um you know young entrepreneur wants to start out mm-hmm. doesn't understand money mm. you know we yeah. help them uh, through cash flow optimizer for business mm-hmm. cfo for b and then also now the farmer because that farmer is close to my exactly, heart exactly. and so we've got also an app for financial yeah for farming mm. because very few people understand the yes, money side yes, yes, uh, of farming. farming yeah then yeah. we are integrating that with technology mm-hmm. uh, to link up with satellites and weather patterns so mm-hmm. they know which crops to grow yeah so we have been pioneering with that company and so we've got these three apps which mm-hmm. we will be relaunching in 2024 yeah in zimbabwe uh global, global. I, i think global oh, global yeah. oh, nice but uh, we always develop the home front first mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got about 14000 people on the app as i oh, speak yeah yeah, yeah so we want to grow that number. number so yeah. taking you back a bit uh, you mentioned in an interview with, you did with uh, it's trevor uh, that you back then uh, you did uh, some gel tem You know what crime did you commit baby <laughs> I think for my big mouth uh, I was a guest of the state uh, alleged uh, to have done various things mm-hmm. so number one, they said inside the trading mm-hmm. uh, for a, a, a stock a broking company mm-hmm. that that I was part of mm-hmm. so that was the one allegation it went to court and the charges were dismissed mm-hmm. Uh, then again uh, for a transaction that had happened mm-hmm. with a client and the national social security authority they mm-hmm. sold shares uh, he sold shares they bought mm. and uh, the allegations were made that i had uh, benefited unrighteously mm-hmm. and so yeah those were the allegations uh, unnecessary it was sorted out out mm-hmm. of court and yeah so that interestingly uh, the good thing there's always good that comes out of this mm, mm, it began mm. my prison ministry because indeed i monda ka bvunza mwari ndika tsaka mwari ndiri kutwa game no no mandiri muno in the way exactly and the lord spoke to me and said look at the conditions of these people mm-hmm. can you help where can you help yeah and so yeah uh, i'm responsible now for celebration ministries mm-hmm. that baptizes inmates yeah uh, skills inmates we give them courses from mm-hmm. uh, is yes. taught at uh, rare central mm-hmm. it's taught you see the gardens they yes. do tistaka yes. ita maboholes neku church kwangu they do rabbit rearing mm-hmm. uh, so yeah we teach them and we're going to do more, more so that. the inmates 2000 mm-hmm. we want a more nutritious mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, diet for diet them, for them yeah. uh, i believe when you are sitting in there mm-hmm. as i learned you mm-hmm. are bored eh taivene library anga isina mabuku ndakapanda unganza mabuku ese 
evana vangu neangu tika mm-hmm. isa ku library yeku Because, central wow. neku remand wow. and then guess what uh, the audience can do the same mm-hmm. they can contact me they can contact our church mm-hmm. celebration ministries we collect books mm. uh, we register inmates they write exams they come out of there more skilled mm. we pay mm. fees for some of them yeah we baptize them we mm-hmm. give them bibles if you have got old bibles mm-hmm. you then on the health side kuna yes. mishonga guess what for 500 bucks we can treat mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you know 200 people wow saka tine ba package atinokwansa ku deliver ikoko e manje it's christmas my wife eh vano do something one do nandos ka ne chicken in ne exactly mm-hmm. so my wife does that ministry as well mm-hmm. for the women inmates and so forth so it's you know there is always a purpose mm-hmm. in your life yeah. and if you look at it negatively he ndakasungwa he vakazondi aiwa ukanya so bvunza mwari deep down kuti mwari Why am I here? Mm-hmm. What is my purpose? I'm not here to suck oxygen mm-hmm. or occupy space. Yeah. I'm here to make a difference. Mm. And so yeah, we are making a difference one inmate at a time. At a time. So for the for the years that you've been doing leadership co- uh, coaching, mm. what is the most rewarding part of it? I think being a coach of coaches. Mm-hmm. I mean when I look at some of my products and what they've gone on to achieve. Mm-hmm and scale that is the most satisfying thing ever mm-hmm. so within southern africa i tell you i've got eight and a half thousand graduates mm. that's amazing isn't ah, it? it is yeah when i look at my top clients and what they've gone on to achieve econet mm. wireless mm. is our top client wow look at them mm-hmm. you know to have been part of that story Uh, as a founding shareholder mm-hmm. and then to also say to Mkoma Strive there are these leadership development courses and then he buys into it mm-hmm. and then my Masiwa buys into, into it. it and you know higher life foundation mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. work they're doing and yeah. being part of that story ngoti wa taka develop ama leader ikoko zvino zvino tipa manyuku nyuku acha hizvo so amongst your outstanding achievements uh, doc there are more than 70 business awards you received while at uh, well is mapamamuru ku kingdom bank these include being twice voted for the, i mean at the top company on the zimbabwe stock exchange uh, in 2001 and 2007 best ten around uh, zimbabwe stock exchange company in 2006 director of the year award by the Inst- uh, institute of directors uh, of zimbabwe 2007 among others you know this is inspiring doctor uh, i mean those watching at home if this doesn't you know inspire you then i don't know what will and because of zokuti ndizvi zvingazo wafadza but amongst your children draws it pane here ari kutira matsimba yenyu mudara bozi a prof yake yakurema well thank you i think uh, during my tenure as you say uh, i got 17 odd awards mm-hmm. and after that uh, you'd be interested i i'm now kuma 33 mm-hmm. so i've doubled in my new life mm-hmm. Uh, getting awards wow. on the leadership development wow. side mm-hmm. so yeah i think awards yes some of them mm-hmm. I, i now also start to question to be quite <laughs> frank <laughs> because kwa kungo buda ma awards ne ma awards but anyway mm-hmm. it is recognition and we thank those who yes. recognize mm-hmm. community players amongst my kids as i said um vana were very sporty like me uh, panache Uh, rugby soccer mm-hmm. athletics awards tennis mm. awards mm. butter tennis tournament shidaro tadiwa first black head boy dainfan school wow. ku, 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 ku south africa kwa wow. kadzidza wow. um you know also victor ladoram type of awards mm-hmm. uh, ponai my youngest he plays rugby for rugby clubs here mm-hmm. uh, award winning you know uh, yeah. uh, people my daughter uh, ivy league mm-hmm. 
graduate, award-winning wow. graduate wow. in New York. Hey. Uh, she went to Pace University. She graduated top of her class. Mm. Baba Kaita, I guess, top six. I top. I got about Berry. In an <laughs> Ivy League university. Yeah. And uh, I, I thank God. Mm-hmm. You know, they look at the awards. Ukashika ku office, ukapinda mumba. Yes. Ma plaques, ariko. And I think it inspires them mm. as well. Yes. Even yes. now, Woma medals, mm-hmm. Avo, I think they're carving their own lives. Yes. No pressure from uh-huh. me, uh-huh. but uh, they've picked up the fair share of of school awards. Mm. And mm. then also Kumabasa, they are faring well. Mm-hmm. My second son is a lawyer in London. Wow. He's doing great things and hey, uh, such a blessed family, man. <laughs> hey. I want to not end. Aha, I'm to inspired, not end. Man. <laughs> to not end. Cool. So, given that uh, you are from ghetto, yet you have made it, you know, this far, uh, do you agree with me when I say once background does not determine their tomorrow? I think your background is important, mm-hmm. it gives you, it should give you a good grounding. Mm-hmm. Your background should also give you solid values mm-hmm. from a young age. Okay? Mm-hmm. Your background should mean like ina andi ndogandaka tindaka kura ne mari andi vundutswe ne mari. Yes. So yes. from that perspective that background of my forefathers mm-hmm. because of the wealth that they accumulated and the community projects that they did it taught me as well mm-hmm. to humble myself. Yeah. And, and not be fascinated ne mm, uh, mm. as much. Um, but I think your background also, should, you shouldn't be a prisoner of your mm-hmm. background. Your background does not necessarily determine where you are going. Mm. We've got many titans, we've got many managers and mm-hmm. executives downtown, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, and, and became somebody. And so, particularly for us as Zimbabweans, I think as you say, where you come from is important, mm-hmm. but it is not the determinant of your destiny. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be. Yes. We shouldn't be prisoners of our past, mm-hmm. uh, background or, or, or heritage or otherwise. Mm-hmm. We can formulate a better future. And this is where thought leaders come, come in. Yes. Yeah. When we come in, we inspire you, we tell you there's a better tomorrow, mm-hmm. we give you a picture of what tomorrow could look like. Yes. Then what does background matter, Ola? Mm. Uh, uh, not necessarily. Yeah. So, it may, know, you it know, may be disadvantaged, mm. yes. I've heard people saying, you know, uh, you got it all easy because you were spoon fed. You know, you had everything you needed. <laughs> yeah. Hence, it is not necessarily that you worked your way up. Kusa so, ziva, hey. kusa ziva. They don't really know the detail of mm-hmm. my background. Yeah. I fought mm-hmm. to be where I am. Yes. Uh, I have cousins who didn't make it. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who we look after? Mm. Are we together? Yes. Takatiri muri yakakura kwa chana kira. And uh, kumshakwedu, yeah, we were okay. We were comfortable. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we are comfortable. My kids are comfortable. But hell, I... <laughs> It doesn't mean they are spoiled brats. Mm-hmm. I won't. I wouldn't spoil my kids for anything, and they know that. Yes. So they've had to punch their way to be where they mm-hmm. are today, mm-hmm. and they carry on punching. And that's wow. the expectation if you are a Chanakira. Uh, exactly. Certainly, if you're born of me, mm. no, I don't raise <laughs> spoiled brats. <laughs> and if you're a mentee either, I don't spoil you. If you're mm. coming to my classes, mm. I don't spoil you. Mm-hmm. You got to work. Yeah, yeah. The only place yeah. where success comes before work is in the dictionary mm. yeah. otherwise the only it's place it's where <laughs> success comes before work is in the dictionary Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so you work first <laughs> and then success follows exactly. so in an interview that you did you know with sunday mail society you said you have decided to get involved uh, in comedy you know <laughs> <laughs> i never pictured you uh to be a comedian I have a sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you follow me on X and social media, yeah. you know occasionally, <laughs> like Farai Day, on a Farai Day, yeah. I throw a joke <laughs> here and there. And yeah. then, of course, I appreciate the arts. Mm-hmm. Remember I told you I was on the National Arts Council board at yes. some point in yeah. time. Yeah. 
Uh, I love history. I love the museums. I love the arts. Mm -hmm. uh, I not only took my kids as we grew up, mm. I was fascinated by theater. Mm. And now, surprise, surprise, my daughter is an actor. Wow. Uh, but we went to a shows. professional one? Yeah, a professional wow. one in New York. Mm. And so that comes from a personal appreciation mm -hmm. of the arts. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. love, you know, the comedians. Yes. I, I grew up watching Mukadota. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was fantastic. Yes. yes. Uh, Bill Cosby. That, that's acting. Wow. And so from that point of view, if I can find an opportunity to support mm -hmm. the, uh, the, uh, the guys who are in the arts, mm -hmm. performing arts, mm -hmm. then absolutely. And so the roast was the article that was done by the Sunday Mail yes. to say I'm into comedy. I'm into <laughs> comedy in so far as supporting them, uh -huh, uh -huh. not kutiku actor. Yes. I, I think I would be a lousy actor, <laughs> but <laughs> but a big but. I think in Doda Kuita, a book, and I think that that book ultimately could be also a movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that book will allow me to also dabble mm. in the arts. Oh, yes. Yeah, but yes. I love, I appreciate the arts. I understand. You, you went on to say, and I caught, I saw it necessary to put my hand into comedy industry because it is facing serious neglect from arts promoters. If you fund and support our comedy industry very well, it has a potential to put a mark on the global stage considering the talent we have. Our country is a high literacy rate, meaning we have uh, capacity to produce quality scripts. How best can we improve that, I mean, the arts industry as a whole? I think we, we, we support it. Uh, we watch them. Mm -hmm. uh, these comedians are brilliant. Mm. I mean, if you watch the roast, yeah. I mean, I had a brilliant exactly. panel. Amazing, yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing, <laughs> talented people. Yes. And so I think we also have the sophistication mm -hmm. as, as, as Zimbabweans yes. to appreciate theater. So yeah, let's mm -hmm. let's support them. So let's which Zim Banava no in the Kuno Ekta is Rosikwanga Queen and it's my drama. My drama, yeah. Hey, Mama Christmas play. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've participated in Christmas plays. Oh really? Christmas <laughs> foretold at our church. So <laughs> maybe that's the little actor in me. Exactly. And the Ekta Africa. Africa. Maybe yeah. especially main Ekta. Yeah. So I can dinika Ekta watch. Exactly. <laughs> so which Zim comedians I know I do you root for? You know, for me, you look at my choice mm -hmm. was contained in the roast. Saga ukatar sava no andaka chooser ida wu. Yeah. Do vangu. Are you with me? Yes. Ndo ndo wa farira wa pana wa. They are doing incredible things. Yes. And so from that point of view, that's mm -hmm. why maybe I for the benefit of those who didn't watch the the roast, maybe you can just name drop. Okay. Saga Taiwana. Ne, 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 the main who's the main okay you tell me who's the main comedian in Zimbabwe oh that's a very difficult question for me uh, to answer are you what I know I, yeah. I know all of them, but yeah. maybe for me then to Anna say Maskiri. Eh? Unawazia. Maskiri. Maskiri unawazia. Alois Bunjira. Alois Bunjira, yes. Yeah. Uh, we had Miss Red there. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. we but Alois Bunjira is into is into sport. Yeah, yeah, he's media. He's mm -hmm. a multi-media. Yes, he's yes. mal mm -hmm. you know, people we call them multi potentialites. Oh yes. People who I can be a businessman on mm -hmm. the one day, yes, and a, you know, and a, a media person, mm -hmm. yes. I can participate in social mm -hmm. media, mm -hmm. and it, yes, so like all those are opportunities for mm. us to actually promote the arts. I see, Shibatsira, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those who we deem to have potential, mm -hmm. yeah. So, we have uh, we have seen many people of your caliber, you know, I don't know if I should say. The elite, you know, you know, flaunt their riches, but uh, you seem to be a different uh, gem. So, or maybe it's not when you a moves or flasher flashes when you marry them out there. <laughs> you know, for me, um, I, I have a, a simple philosophy. In truth, I can only be in one car, mm -hmm. and it, yeah. I can only wear one set of clothes. Mm -hmm. I can only live in one house. Saka, okay, given, okay, I have six cars, mm. okay, I've always had a pool of cars mm -hmm. 
about me yeah but mota idzodzo dzinoshandiswa nevana vangu mm-hmm. 36 uh, ndine vana 4 mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, saka whether my kids come from overseas mm-hmm. or come home yes. they've got access to mm-hmm. a car yeah. so it's a simple philosophy mumota idzodzo ndine truck kana ndirikuenda kunamo chada kutakura zvinhu exactly chada na truck eh ndoda sports car kana ndiri ndega nchida ungo mm-hmm. fanguro mota yangu mm-hmm. eh ndofangura kam ka 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 mota exactly so to me it's the variety that is there mm. uh, but I, I i don't think it's something i pin a lot of value mm-hmm. on oh yeah i would rather build a church mm-hmm. i would rather build a museum mm. uh, are you with me yes uh, mota isha kuda out of fashion yeah sure uh, uh, <laughs> Of what upgrade? Da go upgrade. Phony, phony. No good out of fashion. Exactly. They had out in the garden, dot the latest, latest mm-hmm. in everything. Yeah. Even don't know pay. Don't pay. Yeah. Zuma let us jungo uya. Jungo uya. As you pay uya. So for me, I believe yes. I want nice things. I want quality things. Mm-hmm. I've always believed in driving a nice car. Yeah. But I don't want to be over the top mm. you know ostentatious yeah. yes yeah. i mean when when i've had the money mm-hmm. uh, I'll, I'll tell you someone will say mm-hmm. i had six planes because i saw a deal and i bought the planes mm-hmm. and it, yeah my aim was to be able to fly from country to country mm-hmm. using one using one yeah yeah but it turned out to be a very, very expensive hobby. Mm. Are we together? Yeah. And when it's burning the pocket, guess what? Mm-hmm. I flipped those planes. Yeah. I sold them mm. because I could tell. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, I can hire, a, I can charter a mm-hmm. flight mm-hmm. Uh, and enjoy the luxury yes. still yeah. without yeah. having to insure and maintain and license mm. the aircraft. Yeah. But all those hidden costs was something that were not apparent to me mm, when mm. I plunged in. Yes, Are yes, we together? Yeah. If you buy a luxurious car, mm-hmm. this is what I learned. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you service it? Mm. I was the first guy to bring a Lexus <laughs> in Zimbabwe. A Q7, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And it, yeah. So in a sense it doesn't speak to the fact I like nice things. Mm-hmm. But what I discovered in that journey, the little lesson there is if you are a first, who's gonna service your mm-hmm. car? Mm-hmm. So do you know what in the quiz a motor could zora South Africa? Mm-hmm. And it, safe, it's yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you don't know what you don't know. And it, yeah. in that race, mm. in the race, in the race, in the race, I mm-hmm. did not know that in the race, in the maintenance, in the race, in the inspect, in the race, in the license, in the race, in the hours, in the race, 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 in the that that lifestyle brings with it. Because I had the money. <laughs> and, it, yeah. and for me, it wasn't to show off. Mm-hmm. It was a means of getting from point A to mm, B, to B yeah. quickly mm. and efficiently. Are we together? Yes. Yeah. Then I discovered that there is a world of charter. Mm-hmm. Yes. If I want quick, I want speed. I can just. I want efficiency. Mm-hmm. I can charter without the attendant mm-hmm. costs mm-hmm. that are associated yes. with it. Yes. So yeah. To me, quite frankly, I respect money. Mm-hmm. I, I I I respect people to enjoy the well-earned money mm-hmm. buy nice clothes i yeah. like i i dress well yes sure. but not necessarily ostentatiously mm-hmm. not necessarily to buy a million dollar watch mm. when yeah. i know i can be comfortable in a 50 dollar watch yes. are you with me yeah so for me i would rather invest that money elsewhere mm-hmm. Are we together? Business wise. Oh yeah. Or invest in someone in need. Mm. That's a higher priority yeah. to me yeah. than yeah. being ostentatious. Wow. We are all different. That's very powerful. And those who are different, who have the money, who want to enjoy it, by all means enjoy mm-hmm. it. So in conclusion, mm. some say you are broke. Huh? <laughs> are you still <laughs> a <laughs> million? <laughs> <laughs> are you still a millionaire? <laughs> A multi-millionaire. Thank you. 
Guys, I'm sitting here with Jine, Jine, uh, Jine, what I ko udakuti uite say Munaninga chinzi wa broka. Uh-huh. Okay. Ku broka ka no kumbira e time. Hey. Ola. Dambo kumbira e time. No. Ku broka no kumbira chikaf. Dambo yomba go no. unka chika satarakwe. No. E, saka iya arguti wa broka. Wa broka. Balance sheet rangu ndia naro. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'm broke. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm comfortable. Broke. I'm comfortable. <laughs> if this is if this spells broke, yeah. then I, I'm happy to be mm, broke. Mm, yeah. mm. So how many companies are you running at the moment? Uh, I run family businesses. Family businesses. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but my main business is the leadership, mm-hmm. uh, coaching, and mentoring. Wow. That's my main business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have advisory services. I am invested in fintech mm-hmm. uh, as as indicated yeah uh, not locally mm-hmm. uh, but uh, offshore Off- mm-hmm. uh, so I do dabble in in investments yeah I do own properties not only locally but also internationally internationally wow yeah so I think through the years mm-hmm. I've learned to invest mm-hmm. and to invest prudently mm so that I can leave an inheritance for my children's wow. children. Wow. Not wow. my children. Not children. My children's children. That's hey. what the Bible yeah. teaches me, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that there must be a legacy uh, around me. Yeah. And I, I don't think I would be talking legacy mm-hmm. if I was broke. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. wish, I, a lot of people wish I was broke. Mm-hmm and declare I'm broke, <laughs> but uh, it is well. It is well. Yeah, so in conclusion, it's none of their business. In conclusion, <laughs> Doc, how do you strike the balance between, you know, when it comes to a family, business, you know, God's work, the traveling, and, and so forth? Well, again, it's part of what I learned at SMI. Mm-hmm. We have what we call a wheel of life, where we know that you are a successful individual mm-hmm. if you can balance your life and balance your wheel of life. Yeah. So I've got 12 specific areas mm-hmm. that I focus on, that I've always got goals mm-hmm. in, and I make time for those 12 things. Uh, you want to know the yeah, 12? Sure. Uh, okay, so fa- uh, spiritual and ethical mm-hmm. is important. Uh, those are the top two for mm-hmm. me. My ethics, my, my spirit man, mm-hmm. and my destiny is heaven, mm-hmm. and so church-related work is important wow. to me. Mm-hmm. And then I move on to my family and mm-hmm. home. Yeah. I have one wife, mm-hmm. uh, one. Only one, <laughs> not even a small And four house. kids, <laughs> <laughs> and four kids. Yes. Uh, so family is important to me. Mm-hmm. I prioritize that. Yeah. And then my home uh, is important. Wow. Yeah, a happy home, I think, mm-hmm. is important. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I move on to my physical and health. Mm-hmm. I hope I look good still yes, for sure. a 57 yeah. year old. Mm-hmm. I still can run like like a, a rabbit, uh, yeah. by the way. Okay. A hundred meters. <laughs> and <laughs> so my, I, I try and exercise. I walk. Mm-hmm. I run. I still can sprint. I play tennis. Mm. I still can play a good game of tennis, actually. Wow. wow. And then uh, my health. Mm-hmm. I try and eat well. I try and drink water. Yes. Uh, you know, and uh, things that are good for longevity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Avoid the sugars and stuff like that. So yeah. I do have goals there. Mm. And then my um, my uh, community, my social and community life, mm-hmm. is something that I intentionally live. I have. Maybe what four hundred thousand followers? People who follow me, who I interact with, mm-hmm. uh, my community and society. So I believe really in seven principles mm. when it comes mm. to my community. Yeah. So firstly, it's my my cell group, mm-hmm. my circle, yeah. uh, inner circle, so to speak. I value that. Mm-hmm. Then my community, which is church. Church. So I would say my inner circle my cell Mm -hmm. uh, being my extended family and then my church I'm active at church I'm active in the city Mm. 
uh, I'm active in the country mm-hmm. uh, in Zim. I love my country yeah. dearly. Mm-hmm. I contribute to it in the manner that I best see fit. Mm-hmm. And then I also am a regional player, so I'm a Pan-African. Mm. So I love Africa. I have been to 19 African countries, wow. Rwanda being the latest mm-hmm. one. And my businesses, my mentorship extends to those. Mm -hmm. And then continents. So those are the seven C's Mm -hmm. of my community, what I call my community. And then my mental and education, I'm a continuous learner. Uh, I like to continuously learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, also my training institutes uh, that that I have, I have Mm -hmm. four of them in terms of mentoring and coaching. Uh, the fifth one is the one that I'm opening uh, this coming year mm-hmm. that will accommodate 300 people mm. at a time. Mm. So I'm big on that. Yeah. And then, of course, my financials, my mm-hmm. financials and my business uh, interests wow. are things that I manage. So those 12, mm-hmm. I try and make time for all of them mm-hmm. and allocate time on a daily, weekly monthly annual I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and draft three because 12 is too much for me I'll try to I'll try three mm-hmm. from what you've just you know taught Fair me enough. here <laughs> each each I think each in accordance to their time yeah, yes yes yeah. I, I understand and how is Liverpool doing I know you're a big Liverpool fan <laughs> Liverpool for life there are two teams I love actually. okay I would say three if not four yeah so locally, I'm a Dimbare fan. Okay. Uh, Dimbare and Agakuranayo. Do <laughs> you? So, yeah, Mdarai da Chibuko, Black Aces. <laughs> yes, Imjida Dimbare. Imjida Dimbare. Right. So I love uh, uh, Dynamos from uh-huh. my youthful days. I supported it. Mazwana, George Shire. Yes. And yes. Moses Chunga, mm, mm. all the way. And a memory Mchera Owa. Yes, to yes. date, I'm Dimbare. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, Liverpool. Uh, I I love Anfield. I've been mm-hmm. to Anfield a couple of times okay. to watch matches. Mm-hmm. Uh, even my sons and daughters yes. in Danavo, exactly because they love soccer. My wife has mm-hmm. now joined me. She used to be Chelsea. <laughs> I could have well, Liverpool. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I really love Liverpool. Of course, mm-hmm. Klopp, great coach. Yeah. And I think we're doing we're doing great. Mm-hmm. We are contenders to yeah. the throne, whether yeah. people like it or not. We're not you going there this this Tirimo, Tirimo, Tirimo. Topezerana, Thank you so much, uh, Doctor Nigel Chanaga, for making time to be on this show. My absolute privilege and honor, and I wish this show every success going into the future. Amen. We receive. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> We've been blessed. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was uh, Dr. Nigel Chanakira on this uh, All of Seven podcast show. And we're back again with a very good one again. You know, and uh, you know, I'm, I hope. You've learned one or two things. Not just Kungotera Nyaya, but the Mamma is remembered. Zizos and Chonas and Gazimo, Mumashoka, Daitarana, Dr. Nigel, Chanakira. My name is DJ Ola 7 Owen, Owe Kwamadona. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for now, signing out. We're not your average service providers. We don't just provide average fuel stopovers in Dema, Chikwana, Zico, St. Mary's, Budiriro. Glenara Avenue and a new one coming soon to Murewa. We are beyond kings and queens of our service industries. We are bigger than most. We are giants. Giant Petroleum. Limitless Energy.